breaking news coming out of Maryland this evening. That's where the governor has declared a state of emergency for the area around Ellicott City. This after a torrential downpour caused massive flooding there. That's police issuing a strong warning to drivers telling them to turn around and not drive through the town's flooded streets. Swiftwater rescue teams have also been deployed and there are reports of buildings collapsing. The town is under a flash flood watch until early tomorrow morning. Now let's start with meteorologist Tom Sater. He's gonna join me now. Uh, Tom, what can you tell us about the latest on this flooding in Maryland? Well, Ryan, it's not over with yet. We're looking at a pattern of rain that we've been stuck in for over two and a half weeks with all of the southeastern U.S. getting hit with thunderstorms every day. But look at the lightning pattern from areas of the Delmarva region, Washington, D.C. County, kind of curving back to the south and the areas of the southwest. There's a stationary boundary that's been set up for, uh, seems like, over two weeks. And with that, we're seeing these thunderstorms ride right along that boundary. We're going to get in closer because we're looking now at most likely what will be round three of the thunderstorms moving toward the region. We've already seen rainfall rates one, two inches an hour. Some areas have already picked up four, five, and six. And we had one batch, second batch, and we still off to the west have more thunderstorm cells that could drop a couple more inches. This is eerily similar to what happened on the 30th of July just two years ago in 2016. This is a historic area. I know it well. It's beautiful. I mean, homes and businesses. When you watch this area, at one end of the town, there's a high terrain, and some will blame it on the topography. Some, obviously, is the infrastructure of this historic town because all the water is funneling down to the lower part of Main Street, uh, B&O uh, Railroad Museum. Homes, businesses, everyone who was uh, told to stay in place has had to get up to the second, even third story of these buildings. Two years ago when this happened, and more rain on the way, we lost two precious lives, and they thought for sure that they were not going to be able to recover. They thought maybe only 30% of the businesses would return. Miraculously, about 90 to 96 uh, came back. Great news. But then they rededicated the city a year later, and here we are one year later, and it's happening again. The uh, warnings right now, uh, this is a dire warning from the National Weather Service out of Sterling, Virginia, saying everyone, including the media, get out into the highest ground, and not just around Ellicott City, because you got the Patapsco River, you got all of Howard County, and Arundel County, and with more rainfall on the way in this third round, even though in some areas the water may look like it's starting to recede, you've got the rivers that are going to start to swell. So again, this pattern that we have been set up is just a terrible situation because now, besides the thunderstorms this evening, you toss in this rain shield from Alberta lifting northward, and that's going to give us a, more of a problem in the days ahead. So uh, what we have is what's called a flash flood emergency, and that has now been extended to 10.30 this evening. So again, what happened two years ago is happening again. We're having some reports that we're actually seeing uh, the water levels a little bit higher in that historic area. So they're actually getting to the point up to the second story of these historic homes. Now keep this in mind. Because it's a historic area and you've got that high terrain, you've got a narrow roads. Some of these buildings go back not just to the early 1800s, but the late 1700s. And you have to think of the stonework, uh, the masonry, the cobblestones. How many times has the masonry work been repaired over the decades? So their fear two years ago were building collapses, and now that's actually what we're seeing now. Numerous 911 calls, water rescues taking place, but with a third round of more rainfall moving to the area, there is great, great concern, obviously as you would expect, Ryan. And Tom, I've seen reports that where officials there are, are warning folks, just because the rain may have calmed down for a little bit, that doesn't mean that it's okay uh, for you to go back uh, into your homes uh, or out into the streets, right? They need to be concerned about this third round of rain that is about to come through, right? Yeah, and it's not just uh, the area of the historic district. Now, Patapsco River runs through quite a few communities, but what we're seeing on the radar is what we call back building. The instability continues to fire this up. We call it training, like the boxcars of a train, one thunderstorm cell after another. So with areas that are picked up over six inches in a short amount of time, and you toss in a couple more, that's just going to aggravate the situation. But not just in around uh, Baltimore and uh, Howard County, but now spreading out to much uh, longer areas, including Washington, D.C. And you can see cars just being uh, yep. carried away uh, by these uh, waters. Uh, if you're in a car, obviously you turn around, don't drown is what they always say. Uh, do not take this lightly if you're living yep. in this part of the country. This is yep. a serious Ryan, problem. 
two years ago, over 200 cars were washed downstream. Over yeah. 200, and many had to ride out those floodwaters, unfortunately. All right. Unbelievable pictures. Tom uh, Sater, thank you for your update. We're going to continue uh, to keep a close eye on this, uh, attempt to get uh, in contact with some folks that are dealing with this uh, to get their perspective as well uh, as we continue to follow the breaking news uh, of uh, flash flooding uh, in Maryland. Casters in the south are on storm watch tonight as subtropical storm Alberto, the first named storm of 2018, cleared out Florida beaches today. The National Hurricane Center says Alberto is about 165 miles west of Tampa, packing 50 mile an hour winds. It's due to make landfall around 8 o'clock Monday morning near Panama City. Florida, Mississippi, and Alabama each declaring states of emergency. The storm is already causing massive flooding in Cuba and could become a tropical storm. This is uh, coming at a very problematic time as people are headed towards the beach. It is a long weekend, a holiday weekend across uh, the United States. Lots of people headed to the beautiful waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And now three states, Florida, Mississippi and Alabama under states of emergency as millions of people are anticipating their barbecues, a trip to the beach. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. The eastern edge of the Gulf of Mexico going to see uh, this hybrid system, if you will. It is subtropical storm Alberto. That's because it doesn't have all the true characteristics of a hurricane or a tropical system, which doesn't officially begin until June 1st. It just lets you know and reminds you that Mother Nature typically has a mind of its own. So we're putting that center of circulation about 500 miles to the south of Gulfport, Mississippi or about 800 kilometers. We are expecting it to move towards the north, northeast, gradually make a turn more towards the north. But you have to look at this for the value that it is. As going into the next uh, 48 hours, it looks like it comes close right to that north central coastline of the Gulf of Mexico. Lots of people flocking here because it, it is so spectacular this time of year. Very comfortable. The seawater temperatures are very warm. Take a look at this. Water temperatures in the low 30s in some of the areas. So that will contribute to some strengthening, we think. So what can we expect from this system? as it begins to migrate or transition more towards the north and towards the northeast. Well, already areas from around Fort Lauderdale to Miami to Marco Island through the Everglades have been inundated with rainfall. Some of the rainfall, most of the totals that I have seen have been between 100 and uh, 200 millimeters in some of these isolated areas. But it could happen that across the southeast, some areas could see possibly as much as 250 millimeters of rainfall. The spaghetti models, this is what we talk about very often this time of year. You plug in different information as to what uh, we think will happen, different parameters. They're not exactly in conjunction with one another. However, we could make a generalization as we take a look at this, that somewhere along that north central coast, that's what we think it'll make landfall. As a hurricane, more than likely not. Heavy rainfall, a storm surge, some wind damage, and we're looking at uh, the potential for some localized flooding and the rip current. That's the problem. A lot of people, Cyril, in the water, and they don't realize just how strong that rip current is. A lot of people call it a rip tide. It is, in fact, a rip current. Several streets on Fort Myers Beach underwater after that heavy wind and rain. The tide pushed the water up so high, as you can see here, it was actually splashing customers eating at a restaurant on the beach. NBC 2's Joe Petrello spoke with visitors trying to make the most of a stormy Memorial Day weekend. Drivers making their way through the flooded back streets of Fort Myers Beach. You can think that it might be okay for your car and then you figure out it's almost to your door. More than a foot of standing water in some areas. It came close to reaching a few of the resorts and rental condos. I guess it's the start of hurricane season soon, right? So this is a little bit of it, just to get us prepared. It wasn't just some of the roadways underwater at Fort Myers Beach. It looks like I'm walking on water right now, but this is actually a dock. That flooding was the result of an early morning downpour and a high tide in the Gulf. So high that it soaked customers at one of the beachside restaurants. Not exactly the conditions tourists like Debbie Pyatt had hoped for on their vacation. When you have those reservations already booked, you're still going to come. People at the beach saw choppy water with waves up to eight feet, but that 
mixed with the potential for rip currents didn't keep everyone out of the water. Would you go swimming in them right now? Absolutely not. We are kind of sitting here watching everybody's kids, uh, scared for them. Heavy rip currents in the Gulf waters along southwest Florida are expected to continue through the next two days.